Showcasing local talent, professionals, and everyday people making Salt Lake City what it is today. It's time for another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. A lot of us don't realize the people that we influence on a daily basis, whether that's directly or indirectly, whether that's through the music that we create, the words that we write on p- on a piece of paper and eventually publish into a book, the art that we create, the things that we make with our hands and sell them at a local market, or if you have a small business, we don't realize that we're constantly influencing other people. A lot of times those people might n- never say anything to you. They might never even talk to you but you're influencing them. You're helping them create maybe something down the road, whether that's through something they want to do, but you're constantly influencing other people. And hopefully I'm uh, showcasing that here through the podcast, show, showing you the people in Salt Lake City that are making a difference, the creators, the shakers, the people that are making Salt Lake City a little bit better to live in. So I want to thank you guys for listening to another episode of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. This is episode 126. I got a great show for you guys today. Dusk, Dusk Raps came over to my apartment and we sat down, we chatted, got to know him a little bit better and you guys are going to get to know his story. There's a few ways you can listen to the podcast. If you guys uh, haven't taken a moment to subscribe in iTunes, You can find uh, the podcast is free on iTunes, download it, subscribe. And while you're there, leave us a, leave us a review. I'd love to hear what you guys think of the show. You can also find the podcast on Stitcher radio, subscribe there. Also on the mediocre radio network, tons of great podcasts there. Take a few minutes. uh, The links on the uh, IamSaltLake.com website and uh, click on over to the mediocre radio network. A lot of uh, really awesome podcasts that I enjoy listening to are on the, uh, mediocre radio network. So take a few minutes, check it out. You can also listen to uh, any of the back episodes right on the website. I am saltlake.com. You can get in touch with me directly on the website as well. Anyways, like I said, dust came over to my apartment and we had a great conversation, got to know him a little bit better. We play a few tracks. We play a track off of his brand new EP coffin lid. We play another track off of an older album near the end of the uh, conversation. As always, Support our sponsor, the Urban Lounge. They're located right downtown Salt Lake City. A lot of really great shows coming up there. You can go to the Urban Lounge, slc.com, find out about them. You can buy tickets right on their website. There's actually quite a few free shows coming up there that you're going to want to check out. Follow them on Twitter. Follow them on Facebook. Show them love. Thank you so much, Urban Lounge, for your continual support of the podcast. With that being said, why don't you guys join me now as I talk to uh, Dusk Raps. As he came over to my apartment here in downtown Salt Lake City. I mean, I guess I guess we can kind of just start with. Uh, I mean, you do you do art, mm-hmm. you do music. Is I mean, what else do you do? Anything else besides those two? Or are those kind of your main things that kind of consume you right now? That's pretty much all I do, man. I don't really I don't really have like any other hobbies or anything like that, like. I don't, you know, like that's pretty much what I spend my time doing all the time. Like I go to work and come home and and, and, <laughs> and, and do, do, which, do do art and do music. Yeah, whichever one. I kind of switch between the two. And when did when did you start creating music? Like let's let's back up to. I want to get a little bit of history uh, for people listening. Mm-hmm. To kind of you know get to know you a little bit better. I don't know you that well, so I'm going to assume the average listener doesn't even know you that well. Mm-hmm. You grew up here in Salt Lake City, or where did you where did you grow up? At? Yeah, I grew up in in Salt Lake. I grew up in actually in West Valley. Okay, let's see. So yeah, I was out there um, as far as when I started making music or or creating. I mean, has it always been hip hop, or were you or did you ever do any other styles or other genres of music? Uh, no, I was I've I've always just done. Just done hip hop. Um, I like the the very beginning of it. Like the very very beginning of it was. Um, I can't remember how old I was. Like definitely teenage years. Um, I just started. You know, I was just always into all kinds of music. Um, not just rap, but you know, like when I when I started to hear real rap, like I heard real rap at a very young age. Like this kid that was I was in like fourth grade, and this this kid brought me this. I don't even know why he gave it to me. Like we weren't even like super tight friends or anything, but he brought me this tape of LL Cool J, Bigger and Deffer, 
And um, so that was it, a that was the first rap you were exposed to. Really, was LL Cool J. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that was like he was still like he that was before he was like uh you know like this kind of like for the ladies dude or whatever you know what I mean. So he was like really rapping on it, you know. And I and so. I mean, I, I probably heard some other rap, but that that was like the the thing that like really stuck out to me. So I heard that, and I I can remember like trying to like mimic that, like I'd rap along with it and kind of change the words or whatever. But then eventually, you know, like uh like later teenage years, I would get instrumentals of you know just whatever rap songs I was into, and then just write my own songs on top of that, and then basically record. Uh, those and I wasn't showing anybody this. Like, like, a, like what were you recording with? Just I, like, dude, like, dude, I would like take home like, like tape recorder stuff, or yeah, what? like, dude, I would. What I would do is I would take. I had like a few pairs of headphones, so I would like wear a pair of headphones, so I wasn't like blasting this like beat like through my house and like in my parents' house. So I plug one in, and then I would take the other pair of headphones, and I had this boombox, and I would plug the the other headphones into the mic jack, and you can just do that. You can record that way. <laughs> and so I would do that and I would take like, um, just samples and mixes and yeah, like yeah. I would take like all kinds of stuff. I would take, you know, we would get like, if you could get like a, a, a CD single or a tape single or something like that, that would always include the, um, the instrumental, you know? And so I would just do that. And so like whatever I could get my hands on like that, or I would do uh, the, the thing that, that really I think got me was, I would go to uh, this store called Function, which is basically what Up Rock is now. Like, wasn't that up in Sugar House? Mm-hmm. Was yeah, it? it was yeah, up in Sugar yeah. House. So we like once I discovered that, we would go out there and and buy records and buy tapes and stuff like that. But there's these one tapes in particular by this DJ Mr. Dibs, uh, who's from the Midwest. He's from Cincinnati, and uh, he's like well known in a lot of underground circles and whatever. And anyway, so he had these tapes, and he would they were just really unique. Like he would, it wasn't just hip hop, you know what I mean? Like, but it was like. But it was like he would take all kinds of different records and mix them together and just kind of put it in a hip hop context. And there was just something about like that that grabbed me. And so I did like a lot of that. So that was basically the beginning of like what I would do. And then eventually, like I was got confident enough in it where I would admit to, you know, some of my close friends that I was trying to rap or whatever. And this is like probably like in high school. And what did like they that. what did they think of it? Um were they? Were, I mean, did they? They're, think they were pretty. Yeah, I think they were kind of like, or? "What? Yeah, that, that is, that is that, wow, is that you? Like, holy shit! Like, you know, they, I didn't like nobody really broke my balls too much about it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think that everybody was kind of on the same page. Like they were kind of like all into the same kind of things. And plus, you know what I mean? I'd been, I, I'd already been doing it for a while, so I wasn't like by any means good, but I was probably. Uh, better than they would expect me to be at that point you know what i mean so did you like grow up i mean was music a big part of your fan like like was there a lot of music in your house being played or did you grow up in a very like did you grow up mormon if you don't mind me yeah i did and i mean what did your parents think of of you rapping uh you know what they didn't really they didn't even know about it until they, they like way know. later, I just because well, because I mean, I remember, I mean, I grew up, and I mean, I, when I was like twelve and thirteen, like I was uh-huh. listening to like Two Life Crew, and, yeah, and, and and Too Short and stuff like that myself, and having to sneak them, you know. Oh yeah, I mean? same here. Because it was here. like I didn't, didn't want my mom to see them, you know, in the parental <laughs> advisory <laughs> yeah. lyrics, you know, and 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 so I hit 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 them, you know what I mean? And, yeah. And uh, I mean, there was some 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 filthy stuff back oh then, yeah back in the day you know and uh, I, I still can't believe i was listening to that stuff man yeah same here yeah but I mean, uh, so yeah they, they were pretty cool with you with you doing it or or they just didn't really know you were they doing it. they weren't aware of it they weren't really aware of it like i don't know like i i, I never really talked to them about it and so I, how my parents actually even found out about it was but it was like we were like deep into that stuff like we had been playing around town um, I don't know if we'd started playing out of town yet. And who's we? Um, it was me and my brother. We had a, a group called Mind State, and my brother Ben or DJ Hana was like the the other half of that. And uh, anyway, so we had put out an album, and apparently, I had no idea, but apparently, my mom was like a, a reader of the City Weekly, and so she saw the like the, the write up on our album, and it included like a picture of us. And so she just saw it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because I was thinking like they're like. You know, my parents have always been uh, pretty cool. You know what I mean? Like, even as, as all the the ridiculous stuff that I did as a kid, and like the unconventional path that I continue to take in life. You know what I mean? Like, they're they're 
they encouraged me to kind of have my shit together and, you know, like all that kind of stuff. But they never really discouraged me. They never tried to get me to stop doing anything that I do. But I just didn't ever really think like, oh, yeah, they want to hear about this rap group or whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it just wasn't really. So she saw video. you in City Weekly. And, yeah. and did she come to you and say, look, I, 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 saw, I, I saw this. <laughs> yeah, I think she, I remember her. uh I think I missed the call or whatever. And she called me and, uh, I get some voicemail about how she just saw, uh, you know, like the, the review and whatever. And then, you know, like a couple of days later, I get it like in the mail, like she had clipped it out and sent it to me. <laughs> so were you living with her then? You weren't, no, nah, no, nah, this, were, was, you this were, was way later. We you, were, I wasn't living with my parents so, at that point. So talk about, I mean, you were, you were doing, doing some stuff with your brother. Yeah. How long, how long in, in you said mind state? Yeah. Mind state. Was how how long did you do that for? Um, we did mind state for probably, oh man, I don't know. Maybe, I'm guessing like five, six years. Oh, so for, for quite a while. Yeah, it was, it was, it was you like, played quite a few, few shows here in Salt Lake? and Yeah, we played a lot. We pretty much played everywhere you could play at, at that time um, in Salt Lake. We, you know, had won like a, a City Weekly Award for Hip Hop Group one year. We'd, you know, we, I, as far as I know, we were, we weren't the first, but we were like one of the first people to like play out of town. Like as far as like Utah hip hop groups, other than like where 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 did you play out of town at? Uh, we played just like regionally. We played in Idaho. We played in Colorado. Um, so just kind of the surrounding yeah. states a little bit. Uh, what was the hip hop scene? I mean, like back then. I mean, you mentioned going to functions and 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 stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like it, it, it it's probably not like it is today. Nah, nah. I mean, the the thing is, is that it's it's kind of it's really interesting to me to to have been around long enough to see the evolution of it. But like, you know, when I first started going to that stuff and I first got introduced to like a local scene, I had, I had no concept of that whatsoever. I had no idea that, you know, I, I'd been taken to, to like other local shows of like different kinds of music, you know, but I, I had no, I just never occurred to me that people around here rapped. And so like when I went to, to see that, like that was it, man. Like when I, when I went to see, um, I think the, the first, like real like local hip hop thing that I went to ended up being like this big legendary battle that, you know, like all these people that are like the vets that, you know, were at. And, uh, I, it was just, it was so mind blowing, man. Like I just, it still is like one of my most vivid memories. You know what I mean? Like really? I saw that and was just like, you that was, that was it, man. That was it. Like you, I was you were so stuck hooked. into it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, they, you know, there wasn't like clubs that were super rap friendly or anything like that. These guys were like renting out maybe some place where you'd go to like a, a wedding reception, some kind of low key wedding reception or, uh, and then having like a hip hop show and they just charge at the door. And it was just like, you know, you walk in and it was, it was like a pretty close knit group of people. Like, I mean, and I, I mean, and not including me, like I would go to that and I would just kind of like, I've always been like pretty shy and pretty quiet. So I would just like go maybe with like, by myself or like with a couple of my buddies or something like that. We would just kind of like sit and like, you know, play the wall and just like watch everybody. And it seemed like everybody else knew each other, but us, and we would just kind of just like sit there and like observe, you know what I mean? And was this during the time of mind state yet? Or um, no, no this was, this would predate that. So this was even before. Mind yeah. State so then. as far as like when we started doing stuff like in, in, uh, that time period, you know, we, we started to like, you know, I was like involved in the scene. Like we'd play a lot of shows with, you know, people around here. And then eventually, I mean, how'd um, you get your brother involved? I mean, that's pretty wild, man. Um, you know what? Me and him are, we're just two years apart. So we've always just had like a ton of the same friends, like a lot of the same interests when we were young. And, uh, so he, like, I don't know, he, he just gravitated towards DJing. Is you know, he still it, DJing today or no? Um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't play out, but he's still, like, at, at his house, like, he has, like, a, a room that's, like, full of records, his turntables are, sets, are set up. Like, his thing back then, and in, even so more so now, is, like, he's, like, really uh, uh, into, like, the, the turntablist movement. So, it's, like, they're, it's, like, basically just, they use the turntables as, like, an instrument, and then, you know, they'll use, like, looping pedals and things like that, and, like, it's really cool. And, uh, anyway, so that's kind of, like, he just gravitated towards that. So he already had that going on. And so it was like, they kind of just like, it wasn't really anything that we were planning on doing. You know what I mean? Like we just started to kind of just, just do started it. creating and, music together. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we would hang out on the weekends, like us and like 
few other friends and just like freestyle and just like whatever and make songs and we would you know record four track stuff or you know some some basic like digital home recording you know is there any recordings did you did you make any recordings like yep. like cassettes to to sell or give out with mm-hmm. with mind state then yeah we we made as far as mind state releases there is probably i don't know like five or six i bet okay so a few yeah Quite so a few. and we those were just for the most part uh I think there's two of them, maybe three of them that are still floating around online somewhere, like on a Bandcamp page or something like that. I mean, I like, might, might have to scout it down <laughs> and, and, yeah. and put it on the uh, the show notes for this episode. You know, yeah. There's, I mean, it's old, but it's like you know, I, it shows I, your progression. Yeah, though, yeah. You know I, what mean, I mean, and that's why you can't be embarrassed of that. There, you know? Honestly, I was, I, I kind of took a little break, like for the last year or two, and I didn't really do a whole lot of music. But I went back and listened to some of that old stuff, and in, in a way, I feel like there was some things that I was getting more right with that old stuff than I was with like the newer stuff like you know like how old it is aside like they were just like the place where I was was creating it from I was kind of you know I went back and listened to that and it kind of got me charged to like work on some new stuff but you know I don't know but yeah so we we made that and and we would hand out CDs at shows um and then we had one or two that were like more put together that we um you know push and i would like send them to you know websites hip-hop blogs things like that just to try to and you 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 were getting out there you were playing playing some when did you Mm -hmm. branch off to just dusk when did when did that happen um that happened maybe and why did it i mean what what made you decide to just kind of do your own thing well um as far as that goes like basically you know my brother he just kind of just started getting into other stuff and like i think I was was trying to like I don't know like once I kind of like got a taste for being able to do more of it and like we were opening up for people and, and like I said like playing out of town and things like that and like I don't think he was like super into that and uh, you know like I definitely had his blessing it wasn't there was like no like we didn't like break up as a group or anything like that but it was just starting like, like not, fuck you get out of my life yeah it was just like it just wasn't fitting into what he had going on and. You know, he, you know, he, I mean, he told me himself, he was just like, don't let me stop you. You know what I mean? Like he, and, uh, so yeah, I just kind of just continued to do it. It was so, I don't know, like for, it's kind of weird that it's become this huge thing in my life, but it's like, I never really had like when I, when I started doing it, I didn't ever really have like huge plans for it. I would just kind of just take whatever the next step was. And then, you know, like you, you start to get deeper into it and you want to start doing more with it. And so you kind of look for opportunities, but it wasn't. I don't know. I was just like thinking back on that recently. I'm just kind of like, man, it's weird. Like something that I got, you know, introduced to at a young age is like totally formed my life. Like so many friendships, um, you know, like so many experiences I've had in life have all come from that. Like, you know, like it's just, I mean, I guess everybody has their own version of that, but it was. Well, look at it. Got you on the podcast. Yeah. You know know what I'm talking? (laughs) So, so let's run down the discography, uh, of, of, uh, Dusk Raps. I mean, what, when was the first, when did you have your first release? Cause you have like, what, like five or six albums, right? Um, I've got, let's see, as far as solo stuff goes, I think I've got four or five. Um, so I've got, uh, the most recent one was just a, a two song single, I guess that I did with fish, uh, fish loops. He's a, a local producer and rapper and singer. Um, and it was producer Andy Patterson, right? Yeah, Andy, you, you worked Andy, with Andy. Uh, rec- recorded it. Um, was that the first time you worked with him? Uh, no, I have have um, recorded a couple times. over. Like Basically, that's the spot that I go to when I do stuff with Fish. Is we, they're, him and Andy go way back, so that's just where we do that. Um, but I like that like just because I, I know his history in music. Oh, he's he's recorded with some. Oh, yeah, like, like his, every band in Salt Lake, man. Yeah, and he he's just I've seen him play, you know, in, in a lot of bands and things like that. So it's it's a cool break from like the usual spot. So anyway, so we we like that one. We had the uh, coffin lid, and then we also had Dave Payne from um, I mean a million local bands, and probably most notably uh, Red Bennies. But he I mean he's like. Uh, he plays all kinds of instruments um so we had that and so there's coffin lid um the album that i did uh last year or year before um called throw away the key that was a full album um worked with you know a bunch of local people and people from uh you know all all over the country on that one 
then another one before that was the Brady Effect, which was a three song EP again with Fish. And then also I put out uh just a instrumental thing that was just plays is just a one long track, but it was just made up of beats that I've made called smoke rings. And, and I'll put all the links for uh, these on the, on the, okay. for the band camp, uh, for people listening cool. to, to be now coffin lit. I mean, that just barely came out. Mm-hmm. That That's that two song, uh, EP, I guess. Yeah. Uh, what November, right. Is if I remember, yeah. Did I, yeah. About I, the middle of November, I think. Yeah. Yeah. What's, I mean, people, people, dig, I mean, it's a little different too. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm, it's, it's very, it's kind of, it's got a bluesy kind of, you know, edgy, what made you decide to go in that direction? Is that kind of, I mean, is that kind of the direction you want to go or is that just kind of something fun you put out? Um, you know, I'd like to do more of it, but really the, the collaboration process with fish is, and we have, I, I think it works out well. Like he, like me and him have had a million conversations about music and what things that I want to do. And just after doing, you know, rap for so long and doing a certain style of it for so long, I was just, just ready to do something new. And we had talked about that, but I had no idea what he's going to send me. He, those were just, he just sent me the two beats. Um, we met up one time and we kind of talked about some ideas and then I, and then I kind of took my time putting the songs together. I just, just waiting for the inspiration to strike me. And, um, that's just what came out. But I, I would like to do more of that. Well, cool. I'm a big fan of, of blues in particular. Like I've been, especially lately, I've been listening to a lot of, uh, Howlin' Wolf, um, Elmore James, uh, Lightning Hopkins, nice. like that kind of stuff. Nice. Like I like that old Delta Blues style, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do more of that, but I've got some other projects that I started working on now. That kind of got me reinvigorated to do music just because I, I recorded the songs and kind of sat on them for a while and then i was just like what am i doing like i need to like, <laughs> like, put these let, out let's put them out well let's 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 play before we get any further let's play clock uh, excuse me let's play coffin lid okay and then we'll come back and and chat some more if that's cool with you yeah definitely you left me for dead i'm very much alive voices in my head red moon on the rise talk about forever cold gray sky Talk about forever Talk about you and I I work too hard for this Can't give any more Tell me I'm so heartless Ask me what you do that for Hey, I lost my grasp Rocks glass hit the floor It's the last The last drink I'll ever pour Hey, red moon rising I'm high as the tide so deep, I'm up to my eyes. You left me for dead. I'm very much alive. Voices in my head, red moon on the rise. Dirt on my hands, the job got done. Wasn't part of the plan. Now I'm the only one. So much hurt, such a rotten kid. There you stood, tossing dirt on my coffin lid. Hey, two flights of stairs, one by wide. My right hand, forever by my side. When I sleep, you be my eyes. Six feet deep, true love never dies. Hey. Voices in my head, red moon on the rise. You left me for dead. I'm very much alive. Voices in my head, red moon on the rise. Now, do you do you play any musical instruments or no? Do you, nope. you do you just 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 beats and yeah. and and rap and and. What inspires you to write, like your your lyrics? Like, do you do you have inspiration from anything, or or what? Uh, what? Where do you get inspiration for your for your lyrics? Um, a lot of the lyrics, like in the past, like the the old stuff, or what I would consider my old stuff, 
um, just came from just kind of like almost like a journal. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I would just kind of just write life stuff. And I still do that. But I've also, you know, again, after doing that for a while, I was just kind of just ready to do something else. And so like there's there's elements of that still in my music. But I am starting to get more interested in and doing other things like I've been writing a lot of stuff lately that's just kind of stream of consciousness almost like just kind of just 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 writing and you know later I'll look at it maybe like oh it's about this or it's about that but I don't really try to write about anything I could just start writing and just like as long as it sounds fly together and it goes with the beat you know I'm into that and then also I've been trying to just soak up other influences you know and do like a little bit of not necessarily I don't storytelling but kind of you know just to like add some other dimensions to what i can write about i started to feel like a little bit boxed in you know as what do you mean by boxed in like just just just, i don't know just like writing about the the same thing yeah just writing about the same thing like i think when i first started to write songs that were just sort of like my journal in a way like my life was a lot different you know what i mean i had more to write about and now it's like you know you get more involved in things i don't i'm not you don't have any crazy stories yeah, I don't. to share. You know, you're not, <laughs> like, out, you're not really. out, you know, you know, gang banging and, and, and hitting up the hood of, of Rose Park or something. You know? Yeah, like I don't really, I don't know if I could write a song about like, well, I came home from work and then I sat there and drew by myself for three hours and then I did some laundry and went to bed. Dude, that's, that, that's, that's, that's tough, man. That's tough. You know what I'm saying? You know, well, let, you, speaking of drawing, I mean, let's let's uh, let's talk about your art, man. Mm-hmm. Like that's, uh, I love your art. I mean, it's thanks, man. It's uh, it's definitely distinct. I mean, you you see it out there, and and you're like, man, that's dusk. What what got you into art, man? Um, or how long? I mean, how long have you been doing? I you know I've always drawn. I've always drawn since I was a kid. I think the first thing that really got me into art was just. Uh, cartoons. I love c- watching cartoons when I was a kid. I'd wake up at like you know five or six in the morning on Saturdays. I think wait, we all and like them, wait. You know what I mean? You know, and watch like a half hour of of infomercials so that I wouldn't miss any cartoons. And I would sit there and watch them until like there wasn't any more cool cartoons left to watch. So I was really into that. And then, um, what was your favorite cartoon as a child? Man, favorite cartoon. You know, I like to watch like like were you a GI Joe kind of cartoon guy or were you like a Garfield the Cat? Or the I, I watched all of it. I don't really necessarily know if I had a favorite, but like I, you know, I would watch like all the like Tom and Jerry and like Flintstones and He Man and uh, Thundercats, all the good stuff. Yeah, like all that stuff. Like I would just all of it, but probably like. I don't mean, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily could say what, like which was my favorite, but just all of them, you know, like all of that era. I think that was like kind of like a classic era for, uh, you know, animation. What you, I mean, do you mind me asking what year were you born? Like, were you 78? Okay. So you were a true yeah. 80s child. Yeah. And, totally. I mean, you, you grew up on 80s cartoons. Yeah. So we're talking like, you know, early, mid, late okay. 80s. Yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, I still, I mean, Teenage I Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. All and, that stuff. Yeah, all yeah. that stuff, man. So I was, like that was like a huge thing to me um another you know skateboard graphics uh, i don't i mean i haven't skateboarded for years but that was something that was was a big thing to me i remember trying to like mimic that stuff draw that um album covers you know so it wasn't like i i didn't really and i still don't really have like a huge knowledge of like uh you know the the like classic art you know i, I don't but do you know. think that's needed even um, though, I mean, as an artist, I mean, did, did you take art classes in high school or anything, or are you just uh, all self-taught? I did. I took art classes when I was a senior. I, t- I remember taking, like, one art class in junior high, and I didn't really have another one until I was probably in, like, the second half of 11th grade. And then when I was in 12th grade, I would pretty much had all my credits and everything, so I... I think I think I still had like a math and English class, and then the rest of my classes I just took art classes. Did you find that to be helpful, or you know, was it? Just, um, eh, well, yeah, a I couple think things. I, th- I mean, I like I've always liked to draw, and I think that uh, part of it was was out of like a legitimate interest in art, and the other thing was just like, all right, well, if I don't have to take all these other like more academic classes, then I don't want to. I just want to like, like just stack up the you know the, the drawing time or whatever if i can just sit in there and put my headphones on and just listen to some music and draw then that's what i want to do but yeah i mean that that turned into i don't i don't think i would still be doing art 
at this in in the same way if I didn't do that. There was one teacher that I had, like I kind of just accidentally just through like a clerical error ended up in this advanced drawing class and I was supposed to you know how they would do like drawing one two drawing three four and then after three four they'd have like an advanced placement class uh, that's how they did it here anyway I don't know how it was at your school but so I was supposed to be in drawing three four and they just ended up in the the other one and so they there that happened to a couple other people and they were just like well you can either stay in here or you can go to the other class and they explained the difference and I was just like, I'd rather stay in here. The other class was like way more structured. Like, all right, the teacher's going to set up a bunch of shit and you got to sit and draw it or you got to, you know, like uh, these other kind of assignments I wasn't really into. This one was like more geared towards like building a portfolio that you could take to like college or whatever. You know what I mean? And so I was way more into that. And it was, it was funny that that teacher, Mr. Taylor, him and my dad actually at one point worked together. Really? Yeah. My dad was an accountant for uh the chain of restaurants around here d's okay so they had like this office i mean he doesn't work there now but like when i when, when i was younger that's where he worked and they both worked together in some capacity like i don't know if, if the mr taylor guy if he was an accountant or what he but he was in the office and one day he would just quit and said that he was going to go be an art teacher and then he, and he would be my art teacher. Being your art teacher. <laughs> yeah. So he, but he was really cool. Like he, like I, that's like when I started to like get influenced by like all this other, you know, kind of weird art. And, he, you know, there, there was even people that were like my own age that would be like, why? Like, that's not realistic. Like, why is that guy green? And, and why? Like, there's an extra eyeball there or that, you know, like, you know, I was just into just doing like kind of bugged out looking stuff. And he was always like real encouraging of, of that, like, yeah, like, who cares? Like, you know, that's what he wants to do, and da 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 da. And so he, that dude, was really cool. And and um, you know, when you're a teenager, like, you, at least for me, like, I wasn't really trying to listen to really. You just wanted to do your any own thing. adults, especially. You know what I mean? Like, I just wanted to do whatever I wanted to do. So to have somebody that was in that kind of a position, be encouraging of of what like I really wanted to do was like kind of a big deal. You know, I mean, and. And I don't know if I necessarily fully grasped that at that point, but I you know I definitely appreciated it. But like years later, you know, I look back and I'm kind of like, man, that's cool that, that dude did that. And you've been like putting art on like, I mean, different things like, mm-hmm. like, like, uh, you know, mugs yep. and, and different things to sell. Uh, do, are, are they in any local shops? Can people buy any of your art here locally? Uh, yeah. Uh, at Uprock. At Uprock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're so 1594 South State. So yeah, I've got stuff down there. And then, you know, from time to time I'll do t shirts. Um, what else have I done? Prints. And occasionally, I mean, they they'll look like the t shirts will occasionally mm-hmm. be at Upper Rock, yeah. I guess, for, for people to buy. Yeah, and then they can also get them from me online. But if anybody that just wants to bypass that that's in Salt Lake, just head down to the shop. Do you like art or music better? I mean, do you like um, cre- like drawing or, or- is that kind of a fair question? Well, it, it changes. It just depends on when you ask me, you know, um, like right now I have one art show that I'm getting ready for, but it's, I could have paint like two things for it. What, when is that? I mean, is that going to be uh, after this podcast is up or when, when is it? Yeah, that that'll be, I think they just changed it, but it's going to be up at Mestizo coffee out in Rose park. The thing opens on the 12th. Okay. Yeah. This will um, definitely be up before that. So that's a, like a group show. So there's a, a you know, probably a half dozen other people in that one. But that aside, I don't really, I haven't really, you know, I've got a couple personal projects I'm working on, but I'm like more, right now I'm kind of more excited about working on music. But, uh, you know, if you would have asked me a couple weeks ago, I probably wasn't as interested in music, you know, and I would be more interested in doing art. So it kind of just depends. I'm lucky that way because I am somebody that always needs to have something to do, but I also get sick of doing stuff. So, or I'll just kind of, I, I don't know. Like I always need little changes and things like that. So it's I'm lucky that I can stay productive because when I kind of like get fed up with doing music or fed up with doing art, then I can just switch, go back and forth. Yeah. And so I do that a lot. But and you mentioned, I mean, those those are kind of what keeps you busy. I mean, you mm-hmm. really don't have any other hobbies and and interests. Or yeah. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure you got something out there, you know, that keeps you busy. Yeah. I do, mean, do you read much or, or, I mean, being a writer, do you, do you enjoy reading or uh, a little bit? I like to, I, I'm trying to read more just to benefit my writing. And also I just, I don't know. I just became more interested in, it, I guess yeah. like this kind of stuff that I like to read is more like, um, not so much like fiction things. Like that. I like, I love reading people's biographies. Oh yeah, man. You know, like I'm real fascinated by 
people's story and like how they came to be where they are. Like if I find somebody that I'm, I'm interested in, like a new, um, new music or new artist or something like that, then that, that's like, other than like second to like finding more of their art or more of their music is like, I have to find like interviews or, or biographies or documentaries and things like that. I just love, like it's, I love, you know, I don't know, just seeing how people, you know, like what road they took to end up somewhere where I would like to end up one day in a way. Well, and that's even what I'm trying to do with, mm. with this, with the podcast here is, I mean, people like, you know, they'll go see you perform or yeah. they'll go see your art, but they don't really get a chance to find out who is Dusk, who mm-hmm. is, you know, this other person I have on the podcast, kind of find out their story, what makes them tick, what motivates them and, and keeps them going and, mm-hmm. and kind of uh, how they got to where they're at. Now, you did all of the art on your other albums, but mm-hmm. on your most recent one, you had Trevor. Yeah. Trevor Dopp do it. Yeah. I think I'm pronouncing his name yeah. correctly. Yeah. He, which I actually had him on the podcast and we were talking about, uh, talking about that before we started recording. Are you pretty good friends with him or like what made you decide to have him do the art on your uh, most recent release? Yeah. Trevor's the man. I, um, I definitely count him amongst my, my good homies now. I like how I, how I met him actually was, uh, in that when they were the, the show that they were down here to, on the podcast for. Um, that was, so I, you know, he had some stuff in there and he, plus he's in the Guthrie building. He has a studio there. And, uh, anyway, so I, I didn't, I didn't, I think I met him just once before that randomly. And then anyway, so I went to the show, like the, the, the art show and I'm, you know, like, it, I'm just like the older I get, like the less social I am for some reason. It happens to all of us. It <laughs> so happens to all of us. I was like giving myself credit for even being there in the first place and just being out of my house. And so I was like there, I'm like kind of walking around and I check out the art and then eventually I'm like, all right, well, I can't really, I, I don't think I should leave, but... Man, <laughs> you don't I'm think like you overwhelmed be. by all these strangers. I'm going to go upstairs. And so I was just kind of like upstairs hiding out. And then I, like, he was like up there and he's like, dude, what are you doing up here? And I'm just kind of like hiding. <laughs> and he just started laughing and we just, you know, that sparked a conversation. And then uh, anyway, yeah, we just kind of just figured out we were on the same page in a lot of ways. And so we just kind of started kicking it just here and there and just drawing and like, you know, talking music and art and like collaborating on different things. And uh, also I just wanted to do something that the you know the songs from Coffin Lid I mean I consider I consider them to be rap songs but like it's not necessarily like when you hear those songs you're not like oh this is rap like it has like a a different sound to it and so I wanted to have that that same thing with the, with the artwork so I anyway just I don't for for a lot of reasons it just made sense for me to have him do it you know and I was totally I had no idea what he was gonna do I did you know I told him I was just like do whatever you want and at first he's telling me he's gonna like give me some other sketches or, you know, to kind of dictate a little bit. And I was just like, nope, like, just like surprise me, man. Like I've seen enough of your stuff. Like I know I'm going to dig whatever you give me, you know, and I had no idea what I was going to, what I was going to get, you know, and his, for people that are familiar with his art or not familiar with it, like he's like got like a pretty diverse style. Some of it's, he's like crazy cats that he draws real do some like stuff that's like kind of like based on like outer space or like, uh, ancient symbolism or like, yeah, just like all kinds of like kind of psychedelic stuff. And so I don't know. It I just was, it fit yeah, well it with fit. what you, what, what you released, you know? Mm-hmm. And, yeah. And I was really excited with, with how it turned out. I was, was, was pumped on it. So I'm glad. Now, now back to uh coffin lid, is that only available on Bandcamp or can, is it on vinyl or cassette or CD? Can people like buy it at Uprock at all? Or is it just strictly online? It's, it's online for now. I do actually want to put it on vinyl though. Like we were, we were talking about it and uh, we were at the studio. Fish and I were there and he fish just said in passing i don't even remember what like we were talking about exactly but he just was like oh yeah it's like a single it's like you know it's just like these songs go together like it's an a and a b side and i was just kind of like man we should put this on vinyl so that's coming and then i'm gonna I'll have videos for the songs and stuff like that that was kind of like initially what what I, I wanted to put all of it out at once and it was just taking so long and i just didn't want to sit on the songs anymore so there's more more, more coming more coming with the, this release and i'll probably just continue to do that with with other releases as it makes sense, you know, but yeah, as of right now, it's just on Bandcamp. And I know in the beginning, you know, we kind of talked about the hip hop scene here in Salt Lake. What do you think of the current hip hop scene in Salt Lake? Like, uh, what are your thoughts on, on the, on the hip hop scene or or music scene, I Uh guess in general? Um, as far as the hip hop scene in particular, I think it's cool. Um, there is, I'm trying to get, 
you know, like reintroduced to it in a way. Like I kind of, you know, I mean, I, I always pay attention to it, but I haven't been paying as much attention recently. And so I've been kind of, uh, you know, like starting to poke my nose back into it and see what's going on. But it, there's always been a, I think has been a cool hip hop scene here. Um, right now I think is a, is a cool time. There's, you know, a pretty good range of styles being done. Um, the battle thing is really big. I'm not super. Do you ever go out to the battles? Do you ever get involved um, I'm in not that? Not super into that. I I I appreciate it, but that's I think is probably like one of the bigger things that's going on right now is the battles. I think. But yeah, I've I've seen a few of those. I think it's it's kind of now like that. That's kind of like its own sport now. You know what I mean? Like they do like the the popular style of battling right now is is it's you know who you're gonna battle. Like a couple of weeks prior, there's no beat. You have all this time to write, so it's it's not like the. I mean, I I I don't you know I was never like into to battling ever really, but before it was more like you would it was way more improvised. So now like these guys like when when people are good at it now like they're like they're just like they do some research and yeah, like yeah. you like probably I in my opinion and you know maybe I'm slightly biased but I think. He, you know, because he's part of like the uh, the crew that I'm associated with with music now is the Alive and Well family, which is um, Pat Main, uh, Dumb Luck, myself, uh, Wise, Brunel Washburn, handful of other people. But I think Dumb Luck, you know, like he's just ferocious, man. Like he's, I think he, in, in my opinion, is the best battler around here. Um, he just has like such an intensity, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> I would never want to battle him. <laughs> Be, besides, uh, besides music and art, like what are what are some of your favorite things about living in Salt Lake? I always like to ask, uh, especially first time guests on the show. You um, know, what, what, I mean, obviously, something's kept you here, man. You, yeah, you I, know, you know what i I moved away briefly, like a few years ago. I lived in Seattle for a little while. Um, what took you to Seattle? I was just kind of at a point where I was just burned out and had a, a friend up there. He had just moved up there and was just like, we were just talking one day and I was just like, oh, I'm sick of all this shit. My lease was up at my apartment. And, you know, I'm over my job, blah, blah, blah. And he was just kind of like, come to Seattle. Yeah. Come, come try it up here. You, you see, know? that's how it was for, I, I took off out East for, for about five years. You nice. Know, Cause I was just fed up with Salt Lake. I mean, this was very early twenties for, mm -hmm. my, for myself, you know, but I came back, you know, and, and I think, but yeah, anyways, what yeah. what do you what do you what do you what do you what are you digging about Salt Lake? What do you I like think, about Salt Lake? You know, it's easy to live here. I think you you, you hit the nail on the button, man. It's easy to live here. It mm -hmm. really is. Like I it, and I think that only people who have lived elsewhere really get that because it's just like if you're in a bigger city, then it's like there's real at least for me, I and I got this from other people. It's like kind of like a really like sink or swim kind of thing, you know, if you go to like somewhere bigger you know, like if you're not totally on top of everything, it's kind of your ass. But um, I don't know. I think that, you know, I, this is where I, I think that's a good place to be from. You know what I mean? Like, I think that there is uh, the lifestyle here is, is cool. I think that it has a lot of things to offer. And also, I, I'm i glad to see that people. I mean, I guess it's still somewhat tied into music and art, but I think that it's important to have that here. So I'm glad that some people, you know, that could maybe take off to a larger place, stick around. Well, yeah, you know there's that mean? counterculture. Mm -hmm. here, you know what I mean? Like there's that uh, that whole scene of of uh, the people that want to create. Yeah, and exactly. we're all we're all pretty supportive of each other. Yeah, even if we're not like a hundred percent into what they do, it's like yeah. they still support each other. Totally, we still got each other's back. Do you have any like like what any Things you don't like about Salt Lake, or, or your least favorite thing about about living here? Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's because like because it's I, I, you know it's not necessarily a small city, but it's not big, and so it's like everything. What I like is that everything is connected, and what I dislike is that everything is disconnected. You know what I mean? It's hard to to like branch out and meet people that you haven't met before, or you know if you meet somebody then. You feel like you've met everybody. Yeah, and it's like, I think that sometimes, I don't know, I mean, this is, I guess, somewhat on a personal level, but it seems like people can, it's like easy for people to like be up in your business, you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. But, and then, I mean, then you got Facebook and Twitter and all that, yeah. and it's like everybody knows what everybody's doing. And, mm -hmm. and so it's kind of that, but at the same time, like, there are parts of that that I like. But really, the only thing that I, I mean... That's kind of whatever, but really the only thing that I like that I really don't like about living here is 
Winter, man. Yeah. <laughs> High I guess fives it's not for bad that enough one. to chase me away, but man, the winters here just keep getting like more and more gray. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's that inver- the inversion too, man. That yeah. that will get you. I don't remember that being such a thing uh, up until like the last couple of years, and it was just like all of a sudden we have the worst air in the country. Yeah, go figure, right? I you mean, we're I mean? not even that big of a city, and we have mm. the worst air. Like you can go to Los Angeles. And and breathe better air than we have here, and we're, you know, I mean, it's like it's because of our geography. We're down in this valley and everything like that, and it's just what it is. But I don't know, whatever. I mean, I'm still here though. You're, you're you know? still here, and you're still. <laughs> and, and another thing I like to ask, especially uh, first time uh, people on the show, is uh, do you have any like favorite local eating spots, favorite local restaurants, cafes that uh, that Dusk likes recommends? Um, you know, I always even ask this for my own rec. You know, try new places. Yeah, I think, man, there's a few. Uh, the Pie, um, Vertical Diner is another one. You know, not um, a lot of people have mentioned Vertical Diner on the, on the podcast, and they're, they're delicious food. Delicious. Yeah, that place is good. I, Shanghai Cafe is another one. Do you have a favorite dish from there that you like? Um, pon Pon Chicken. Okay. Um, that one's pretty good. I usually get the fake chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, like the, the vegetarian uh, cashew chicken is is my favorite thing yeah. from Shanghai. Um, yeah, those are the the ones that come to mind right now. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask? Right now <laughs> my mind went blank. So you're not a winter person, so it's safe to mm. say you're not like into into like snowboarding or skiing or you, nah. you know any any <laughs> any winter sports. No. What are you looking like in, in with 2014? Ahead of us. I mean, I guess this will be up uh, 2014. I mean, mm-hmm. is there anything you're looking forward to in 2014? Um, as far as that goes, like with the release of uh, the Coffin Lid single or EP or whatever, um, it kind of got me hype again on doing music. So I've been hitting that a little more heavy. So I, I, I'm not really so much worried about playing a bunch of shows, but... Um, just re- I want to release a lot more music. I kind of like gave it a lot of of thinking about it and figured out how, you know, different hangups that I was having that were kind of stifling my, my output because art, I kind of look at as like, I'll just, I don't really think about it too much. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm always making stuff and I don't worry about if it's going to turn out or anything like that. And I kind of caught myself overthinking my music and things like that. And, uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm looking forward to putting out more music. I've been working on a lot of different kind of diverse projects, you know, more, definitely more art, you know, and just everything that goes along with that. So hopefully, you know, I would like to probably like start playing out of town again and doing more art shows, you know, making more stuff, just trying to just stay busy, man. Just try to just, yeah, you know, top what I did uh, in 2013 and just keep doing that, you know. Tell me something about yourself that people listening might not expect. Hmm. Might not expect. A guilty pleasure. Or, you know, <laughs> I mean, uh, um, you like bubble baths, or, or you know? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. There's so many. <laughs> um, gosh, I don't know, man. Um, I mean, if you don't have anything, no, I'm no, trying no, to no. think of something a good one. Um, I, you know what? I've been uh, as far as like guilty pleasure. I think like I've always been into all kinds of music, and I don't necessarily. Like, I, I stand by this but it's like some people would consider it to be a guilty pleasure but like i don't know why but the older i get the more i like old country like hank williams and like johnny cash or like st- things from that era yeah. which is funny because like you know like people growing know up, me to like, be oh, a rap guy and everything and especially yeah growing up i mean like i heard you know a lot of the music that i still listen to i heard from my parents but you know, I would hear country from them and just back then I was just kind of like, oh man, like I can't hear that. I don't want to listen to this, whatever. But at a certain point it switched and man, there's some, it's not all the time, but every once in a while I'm just like ready to hear some, you know, some, some Hank Williams or something like that. <laughs> nice, nice. What's the biggest lie that you've ever told? Hmm. The biggest lie. Um, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's because sometimes I'm busy, but sometimes you're not. You just, you just don't want to. You just don't want to hang out. You know what I mean? Sometimes you're just like, I'm busy. Yeah. Okay, what's on Netflix? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? What do you What do you want written on your tombstone? Hmm. Well, written on my tombstone, a good song quote. I don't know what song, but like a good one liner from a song. 
Not not, not even one of my own. Maybe like an Otis Redding song or something like that. I like it. Well, how can people find you online? What uh, What's the best ways to... And actually, you have a show coming up January 17th as well, yeah. right? You're going to be... Do you want to talk about that for yeah. just a second before we close out here? Um, yeah, Brunel Washburn hit me up to, to play his... Uh, he does a thing every month called Hip Hop Roots. So I'm playing the 17th at the Canyon Inn um, for Hip Hop Roots. There's oh man, I can't. There's a, there's a, there's a yeah. ton of bands playing. And, yeah, you know, I don't I'll, know, I'll get the, I'll, get the, off, I'll get the I'll get the link up on the show notes for this episode. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's uh, that's coming up. I'm pretty excited about that. I don't I haven't been playing a lot of shows, but I'm excited to do that. I got a couple new songs that I've been working on lately that I'm gonna try out at that one. Plus, you know, some of the stuff from Coffin Lid and maybe couple of mind state songs maybe even just to try something new at that show or mm-hmm. okay and you're on twitter yeah i'm on twitter uh at dusk raps you can find me uh duskraps.com um instagram i'm pretty active on it uh dusk raps on there as well like if i see your art around town or something mm-hmm. maybe, maybe tag you in it you know yeah and and and, and for your instagram and, and you're on facebook mm-hmm uh, Face, yeah, just Facebook, dusk wraps on Grabs. Face, mm-hmm. facebook and then uh you had dusk wraps.com yep. i guess is your website mm-hmm. uh check out your merch at uprock yep go you know buy your music on Bandcamp. anything else anything else that we didn't talk about that maybe you wanted to touch on uh before we completely close out here um and we'll play another song of yours so think be thinking of a, of a song uh as well okay that um, we'll end the show out with as far as anything else, uh, really just uh, check out aliveandwellfamily.com. Check out Uprock. That's pretty much it, man. Those are, you know, just art and music, man. That's it. I like it. What song do you want to end the show with? There is a song I still kind of dig off my last album called Laser Beams. It was produced by this this cat up in Ogden, uh, Yoga Flame Kane. People should stop sleeping on Yoga Flame Kane, man. He makes crazy beats. And, you know, a lot of people know that, but not enough. That dude, seriously, is is talented. But, yeah, I think that one. All right, Laser Beams. All right, well, hey, I appreciate you coming on and and getting to know you a little bit better. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I'm glad we're in the same neighborhood. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, we're neighbors, man. No reason to not have you on more often, you know, and uh, chat. So, anyways, I appreciate it. Go to the show notes. Get in touch with uh, Dusk. Let him know you heard him on the podcast. And uh, go check him out on the 17th. Emphatically original, magnetic manifesting This is culture, this progression, this is more than time invested It's interesting watching, it's obvious who's flexing I feel every eye, let your desperation die Learn to live with it, that's a common reply I'm a ghost with the dose of melodic words around It's all on me, collect my karma in the sky So many places we could be, so I'm glad we're here tonight I seem to be my light, cut through the darkness of space Eventually it falls in line to illuminate the shine On a face, find a permanent place in my safety glass heart Apologies for bad starts, I'm a gentleman of many lost start Man, I fit my own description, contradiction and law Uplift and fall Spent my days in the record store, nights in the bar. That's why I rap like Elmore James, playing slide guitar. My hazy dreams are made of laser beams. They ask what's so special about me. Nothing I reply. My hazy dreams are made of laser beams. They ask what's so special about me. Nothing I Here at one time for the radiant child For all the crazy babies with the nerve to go wild When they observe the work, it is deemed worthwhile To make a whole room chill, so say it's alright We got the boom for real Man, we used to have the love, trust, dust, do still Man, I am just too trill And I'm playing this game, it's probably never been real Sun heat, put the sweat on your brow One week, get ahead of self now Drum beat, run street, look at societies And wonder aloud how Every great mind been cut down A dream to private life in its prime Never got to thrive, never got to shine Never let it happen to mine So I activate life, all systems operational Listen, listen, the rhythm's occupational My hazy dreams are made of laser beams They ask what's so special about me Nothing I reply 
There's a mountain shaped like a skull, a sunken ship, a dead man's chest. What else you know? Feel like I know soon everyone else do to the spell of the wishing. Well, I take them all back, then everyone else did too. When everyone gave up, it all stopped being true. I learned a lot in parking lots the right way, what not to do, how not to get caught when you're doing what you gotta do. Sometimes it's so hypnotic, sometimes it's what a waitress would do. Sometimes it's so robotic, calculated and cool. My sound made it, even if If you think my sound is outdated, get down from my town, so proud you can't hate it. No doubt now it's easy to get dated. Got this love and hate relationship, indeed it's complicated. First we imitate and innovate and really say we made it. My hazy dreams are made of laser beams. They ask what's so special about me. about me, nothing I reply. 